So, the Walking Dead Extended Universe is already falling apart. Before it even begins. At least, some of the more recent updates make it appear that way to me. For those of you who aren't aware, you can consider this video a bit of a follow-up to my previous video talking about the expansion of this universe, where I shared some of my hopes and expectations for the upcoming spin-offs and expansions of this overall series. Flashback. For one, when did the first phase end? When did the second phase begin? And what did either mean to the overall story of the universe? And what is the third phase potentially going to be moving forward? Well, if you ask me, I'd say the first phase ended on February 14th, 2016, with the mid-season premiere of the sixth season entitled No Way Out. This would mean that the first five seasons and nine episodes of season six of The Walking Dead, as well as the first season of Fear the Walking Dead, were all part of the first phase of the overall story, which ultimately focused on the concepts of survival for our main characters. For the audience, we had spent nearly seven seasons of television focusing on that specific goal, culminating in the massive walker migration orchestrated by our main characters in the early episodes of season six leading into our group's successful defense against the dead to save Alexandria and showing once and for all that the dead were no longer the main issue for our survivors in the series. From there, the second phase of the Walking Dead universe shifted focus ever so slightly away from mere survival to trying to find normalcy in a hectic world surrounded by the dead. As our characters across the two shows that had premiered up until this point, as well as World Beyond later down the line, focused away from the immediate threat of the zombie hordes outside their walls and on how one lives in apocalyptic world, not merely surviving in it. Throughout this phase of the universe, we've seen our characters struggle with issues of indentured servitude, opposing ideologies, racial divides, class divisions, and the general complacencies that come from a life of comfort, even in a world such as this one. However, for as good and, let's face it, bad as it has been, this isn't a direction that could or even should continue into the indefinite future. This is likely why Robert Kirkman decided to end the comic book run when he did, as any continued exploration into his world would start to feel like cheaper and cheaper rehashes of the same idea. This is specifically because Kirkman made it clear that his story would never explore the origins of the zombie outbreak, nor would it attempt to drive the story towards a real cure for the virus or a solution to the problems that crippled the world around our main characters. Yet, I don't think AMC has the same resolve when it comes to the expansion of their zombie universe. There's, there's no magic. There's no cure. They're lies! Instead, I think the exploration into a cure or a solution for the zombie outbreak is the real direction for the next phase of The Walking Dead on AMC and AMC+. Ever since the premiere episode of The World Beyond in October 2020, the audience has been given subtle hints that the Civic Republic has been working towards a cure for nearly a decade into the zombie apocalypse. This is in addition to the post credit scene at the end of The World Beyond that hinted that a handful of French scientists were trapped in the United States and potentially alive and well this far into the future. As you may recall from season one of The Walking Dead in a show-only storyline, something not featured in the comic books, we had Dr. Jenner saying that the French were the closest to finding a potential resolution for the zombie outbreak. And just like that, Dr. Jenner was brought back at the ending of The World Beyond in order to solidify that memory with the broader audience and hardcore fandom of The Walking Dead. On top of all that, we're now going into an uncertain future for Fear the Walking Dead's eighth season as our main characters venture blindly towards a water fair and community that has some subtle but strange visual similarities to the Civic Republic military that is currently working on a cure and could potentially be working with the French scientists mentioned in the world beyond. I'm just saying, if you look at everything that's been building over the course of these last couple of seasons, it all seems to be focusing primarily on a cure-all. I know it really seems unlikely, but... Doesn't it seem just a bit likely that Scott Gimple and company have been slowly weaving together a story that will require 
require all of our main characters to venture into the world unknown, relying on each other to complete their individual missions and come together once again in order to save the world. In the meantime, they were like, hey, you wanna, you wanna go on a mission? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We already know that the creative team behind The Walking Dead wasn't expecting AMC to pull the plug on its biggest show ever, even after the series ran out of comic book source material to adapt. We also know that a majority or potentially all of these stories were planned to be told sometime years ago. Head out west. New Mexico. What the hell's in New Mexico? Walter, put your dick away, Walter. People who it. If anything, the only thing that has legitimately changed about AMC's plans or the future of The Walking Dead is not the story itself, but the business of television, as the potential for year-round content for popular IP has required a shift in the way that TV shows are made and altered the way stories are being told. As AMC's programming chief Dan McDermott recently said about the upcoming release of their adaptations of Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire, you have to develop supporting characters underneath those significant leads that can, and this is a process of discovery. Some of these are in the books, and some of these might be new characters. Some of these might be characters that have a small roles in the books, but would be created to have an oversized impact in the series. But ultimately, after two or three seasons, spin off and become leads of their own series. And then you can really start to have fun because then you can start pulling characters from different shows. For me, taking McDermott's word to heart here, you can start to see the way AMC has envisioned the future of The Walking Dead as a continuing brand of multiple, multi-season shows starring fan-favorite characters that can easily be folded into each other's series in order to build a bigger story that's being told across multiple series instead of your normal 16 episodes seasons for the main show. And if you ask me, I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for the universe as a whole to branch out and do some new and interesting things. Because if nothing else, the utter dedication for the main show to finishing out the source material, as well as the reliance on getting those Rick Grimes movies out for the last several years, even before it became a new television series, was at least for the most part pushing the entire universe back. End of flashback. You know, obviously those predictions were made well before the end of the main series and some of the more recent updates we've received in the days following the grand finale of AMC's biggest series ever. With that being said, let's jump right into this. First off, I feel like it's worth breaking down the only thing that truly matters when we're talking about a potential expansion into a creative endeavor, especially one encompassing several individual series being produced by one of the most prominent independent entertainment companies of the previous and current decade. Yeah, we have to talk about the business side of it all. AMC has had a rough year. From the end of some of its most prominent series, including Better Call Saul, Killing Eve, and The Walking Dead, the network has recently experienced a few major shakeups, with the company following through with a wide scale layoff of 20% of its staff earlier this year because, quote, the mechanisms of the monetization of content are in disarray. With company chairman James Dolan recently stating, it was our belief that cord cutting losses would be offset by gains in streaming. That has not been the case. These layoffs were further punctuated with the departure of company CEO Christina Spade, stepping down after only three months on the job, and the high profile cancellation of previously renewed series like Moonhaven, as well as many others. Yeah, I didn't really watch those shows either. Still, this doesn't look good from a business perspective. Of course, the network did find some noticeable successes with the launch of the Immortal Universe in the form of the first season of Interview with a Vampire, as well as the final season of The Walking Dead. At the time of recording this, it is somewhat unclear how the Mayfair Witches will fare during the entirety of its first season, but the reviews are underwhelming to say the very least. <laughs> 
Additionally, one could argue that these shakeups have already started to affect the world of The Walking Dead, with AMC deciding to end Fear the Walking Dead in its eighth season while pushing Dead City and the Daryl Dixon show further into the year. Also, all of this maneuvering led to the Rick and Michonne show being pushed from its original 2023 slot into sometime early 2024. So yeah, that seems like a lot. But before we go on, it's worth mentioning that pretty much every other streaming service experienced some kind of growing pain last year. So AMC isn't the only player struggling. I guess though that the biggest difference is that AMC is still a very small fish in an incredibly big pond. And unlike Netflix, Disney, HBO Max, and maybe Paramount, they kind of need everything to hit, as they have far fewer attempts at the plate. Which kind of leads me to my next point with amc being such a smaller fish in this big pond it would seem to suggest that the network as a whole might get snatched up by a bigger fish like amazon in the near future something like that or the entire thing falters and its properties are sold piecemeal to the highest bidder. If that happens, I'm assuming that Netflix will come out swinging pretty hard for the rights of the Walking Dead franchise. As a recent survey by Hub Entertainment, research found that of the top 10 pieces of content enticing new subscribers over this past year, The Walking Dead was one of the only properties from Netflix besides The Witcher that was adequately growing the streaming juggernaut subscription numbers despite faltering in so many other places. Oh, oh. Plus, when you consider AMC's plan for canceling The Walking Dead was to eventually regain the streaming rights to the entire series from Netflix, and Netflix's mixed success with finding an original show to adequately replace the hit drama. Right. I mostly just Reads to Toby Thorn, so. I can imagine that acquiring the rights to the entire series would be a relatively lucrative business decision for Netflix if they are given that chance. You know what? Hell, one of the things I think would be really cool is if Netflix were to acquire the Walking Dead universe sometime in 2023 or early 2024, so they could potentially roll out all the upcoming spin-offs as Netflix originals. Kind of like how they did with you back in 2018. And if they wanted to go just a little bit crazy with it, wouldn't it be really cool if they could recut the three upcoming spinoffs into a real season 12? You know, if they could find a way to do that. I think that would be really cool. Although it might not work unless there's some story interconnectivity that makes all three of these shows kind of stand together but we'll talk about that later. If nothing else, that would at least give fans of the series a chance to relive their first viewing experience of these new shows and potentially satisfy so much more people who either wait for The Walking Dead to show up on Netflix in general or just gave up on it entirely. Shut up. Okay. That might just be wishful thinking on my end. Regardless of all of this real world financial stuff, this isn't the main reason that I'm making this video claiming that the world of The Walking Dead is somehow already falling apart. Instead, it's because of some, let's call them, concerning creative decisions that are starting to make their way around the rumor mill. Starting specifically with the rumor that the upcoming Rick and Michonne spinoff is only meant to be one full season. This just doesn't make sense to me. First off, while I generally understand that the idea of six hour-long episodes would in fact equal approximately the same amount of runtime as three individual movies, the creative potential of such a decision seems worryingly limiting. I could be in the minority here, but I always found the idea of a Walking Dead film franchise enticing. Not for the promise of big budget action, but to see how this seemingly never-ending series of survival would adapt to the silver screen. It isn't hard to imagine that a meaningful film-going experience wouldn't force the creative team behind The Walking Dead to both expand the narrative world for our main characters while narrowing their collective goals into something more tangible than that of just mere survival. After all, if this is going to be a story worthy of an entire film trilogy, it had to be epic filled with relatable characters and ultimately lead up to a convincing and satisfying conclusion that hopefully satisfies as many people as possible. Ray That's why so many people, including myself, thought that the film trilogy 
at the very least, the first film in this said trilogy was going to focus on Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes being caught between wanting to go back to his family and the CRM's cure for the zombie virus. Obviously, this is something that the fans have been hoping to see for literally years now. And stories such as that would likely need to pull other players from the universe of The Walking Dead as well. Beginning with Denai Guerrero's Michonne, after her exit from the main series back in season 10. However, I can't help but feel like this decision to walk back the promise of several feature-length films in order to pivot to a mini-series that aims to conclude the stories of two of the most prominent members of the entire universe is somewhat putting the last nail in the coffin of any lingering hope that AMC's Walking Dead universe could be about anything more than just survival. Instead, it seems like this creative team's brilliant decision is to simply showcase different parts of the world filled with walkers. I don't know about you, but I find this formula just a little bit tired, and the suggestion that there are several other living communities that have also weathered the zombie apocalypse, honestly, I feel like that makes all of these other spinoffs that much less enticing. It's even stranger when you remember that a not so insignificant part of the final season of The Walking Dead, as well as World Beyond, were dedicated to the idea that there aren't a whole lot of people like these characters out there. So they all need to work together in order to fix the world. Additionally, with pretty much every show going on in this universe right now, there seem to be enough elements set up to build the upcoming spinoffs into a direction that would all focus around the CRM. Instead, we seem to be getting Daryl going to foreign nightclubs, Maggie and Negan finding a civilization that lives in tall buildings and zip lines between them in New York, Morgan and the Fear cast running into a potential faction of the US government that is way into protecting children, and even Tales of the Walking Dead teasing the whole PPP card thing from season 7 that wasn't just a retconned reference to the CRM. Serious question here. Are the CRM important to any of the upcoming spinoffs, or are they just going to be taken out by Rick and Michonne alone before we just move on into other avenues of this universe? Because at least to me, it's starting to feel like none of these shows are truly connected in any meaningful way, and will instead continue to focus on the strange new safe zone perspective that has been plaguing the world of this universe since its inception. You can't keep getting away with it! So, here's the question, both for you, me, everybody else listening to this. Why is this annoying? Why does this seeming lack of connection give me more doubt over the expansion of this cinematic universe than I have ever had before? Well, you know, at least for me, I just kind of find it boring. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm somewhat of a ride or die fan of The Walking Dead. At least at the moment of recording this script, I'm all in for watching Dead City, Daryl Dixon, the Rashone series as it airs. Hell, I'm even planning on suffering through the final season of Fear the Walking Dead, just like I have done with every season of that show since Morgan appeared in season 4. My issue is, there doesn't seem to be any major concessions from anyone involved with the creation of this universe that the formula might have gotten a little stale at this point. Instead, they seem to think that breaking away from the backwoods of Georgia will help invigorate the fan base to pre-pandemic levels. And I just couldn't disagree more. If anything, showcasing more unique civilizations from around the world kind of takes away from the time that we spent with our own set of characters throughout the past decade. If there are countless other thriving societies, why did we take so much time to focus on this one? More importantly, why did we spend so much time with these characters if their existence isn't going to be important to the overall future of this specific universe? Call me corny all you want, but I can't help but to shake the feeling that any promised expansion here, especially one utilizing the main characters after their natural ending from the source material, kind of demands a bigger story than mere survival and community hopping. Whether that story is about a cure or some kind of nationwide civil war is somewhat irrelevant. If this story and these characters have to continue. I want there to be an overarching reason as to why. There just doesn't really seem to be one here, and everything that has been released seems to suggest that there is no intention to shift in that direction. So while at the end of the day I don't think that staying the course is enough to tear apart this entire universe within the next two years, but I do think it's hard to look at the state of AMC as a network along with the waning popularity of some of its biggest shows, and somehow 
come away with the idea that we can continue this indefinitely without some kind of major shakeup. But that's just my take. So I thought I would say this last because it kind of came into my mind as I was putting together this video. And honestly, I thought it would be something that people might start talking about in the comments. So I wanted to make sure I addressed it here. Obviously, I understand that condensing the story of a potentially financially dubious trilogy of movies into a single television series is somewhat of a better business decision than anything that I could really argue, especially when you consider everything that we've talked about from the beginning of this video. I mean, that seems to be the basic operating strategy for Disney over Disney Plus since its launch and dishonest press releases aside, it mostly worked for them. People will subscribe to your streaming service for must view content. And if that content's weekly basis stretches it out for over a month, then that's potentially two payment cycles for a new customer and at the very least a potential hook to get them continuously paying for the foreseeable future. So yes, I get the move away from the film trilogy as it pertains to the business of television making. Also the ability of the creative team involved having the potential to tell the entire story and not get canceled a third of the way through is ideal, both from an audience perspective and a creative one. But even with all of that being said, it is still somewhat disappointing to me. As I said earlier, I wasn't excited to see a blockbuster view of this cinematic universe. I just hoped that the story would be focused on something other than leapfrogging through sanctuaries and hopefully finding some bigger purpose that could fill up an entire trilogy of movies. Additionally, I do think it would have been really cool to see how the continued expansion of the TV show would have impacted the stories of the films, or more likely how the films would have impacted the TV show. As somewhat of a quick example, it was kind of fun to see how Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. integrated the lore of the films into its week-to-week -week format, even if the films didn't really address the show's existence. And if we're taking the ideas that were promised to us from the creative team, it doesn't seem like the Walking Dead films and the TV show would have had that problem. So it would have been really interesting to see how these two separate mediums affected each other as the years went by. And as previously mentioned, there was a lot of speculation that characters from the show would make their way to the films eventually. So it would be likely that these stories would start interconnecting in interesting ways down the line. Again, at least to me, I think that's a really fun way to expand this universe. One that even if the upcoming miniseries has approximately the same runtime as a trilogy of films, the makers of the show couldn't really organically integrate into existing series because those expanded stories, characters, and pivotal events haven't happened yet. Rick and Michonne are stuck in their own world for six episodes, or at least that's the way it looks like. That's kind of why I feel like the series has been shifted away from hyper-focusing on the blockbuster status of the story to that of an epic love story. For its part, AMC has decided to shift away from the CRM, a potential nationwide or universe-encompassing villain that would draw in characters from the main show and any other spinoff that they created into a more boiled down idea that has all of our main characters going from place to place around the entire Walking Dead universe and coming face to face with new and more interesting communities. I don't know about you, but that just seems like a big letdown in my opinion and one of the reasons I just had to make this video. But that's just my take. The KRW Network. <laughs>